You mentioned something about a niche and breaking out of a yeah. niche. That's a really, really good thing to talk about because I absolutely, you know, b became the crazy guy. And that was what I did. I was crazy. It could be crazy rapist. It could be crazy retarded. It could be crazy um, in prison because I killed my parents. It could be, but some version of like psychotic. And I used that to get a foothold in the business. And I worked it. And I worked it to the point where I had to stop because it was, it was, I was getting really pigeonholed. And people want to pigeonhole you. There's two things about what people want when you walk into the room, the people who, who can give you jobs. The first is they want you to be good because they want to move on to the next person. They want to move on to the next role. They want you to be the guy. Remember that. I mean, that's really key. When you go into an audition, they want you to succeed because then they're done. The other thing is they're done when they figure out what your type is. Their work is done. He's that guy. Does he do this, that, or the other thing? Oh, he only does that. Okay, got it. They don't like to think outside that little box. Mm -hmm. So I had to stop going in for those roles. And it was a, there was a dry spell for like a year, it felt like. Like this year was very slow for me. Prison Break was a big deal. And then that's, that was sort of the apotheosis of that, of that character. Although, I, I actually I did, I did one more. It was like that, that scene, you know, Al Pacino going, every time you think you're out, they pull you back in. <laughs> I did one more of those crazy roles for a, a guy who's a really nice guy. He's a friend of my wife's. He's a director. I got hired on this job, and I agreed to do it. I can't remember if it was an offer or not, but it doesn't matter because I said, I'll do it because it's this director, and I got to go to a foreign country and work in a foreign country, and um, even though the character had sort of um, a, a, had had a psychotic break because he had stopped taking his meds, I still thought the character was really interesting because the conflict the character had was real. It was like, I, I'm either going to be an artist and uh, not take my drugs or be a good uncle on drugs and not be able to do my work because I've been nulled out. It's a, it's a cool, it was a cool part. Yeah. And I thought it would just kind of get buried. And there was a goddamn review of this show in the New Yorker. <laughs> and there's a cartoon. It's a bad thing. <laughs> I know. I know. That's the ridiculous thing. Is like I did it. I was like, I'll do one more of these. I'll bury it. I'll be done. And it was like, that was the thing. And, and there was a quote about me. First of all, it was great in some ways because, hey, who doesn't want to have their name mentioned in the New Yorker? And who doesn't want to have... I was cartoonized in the oh, New wow. Yorker, which is very exciting for me. I love the New Yorker. I have a dear friend who writes on the New Yorker. It's one of my favorite magazines. And I've always loved their cartoon stuff, and I was psyched. The problem is what was said in the New Yorker article about me was, and I quote... <laughs> The, the actor who plays this character, Silas Weir Mitchell, is known for playing these types of roles. So as soon as you see him, you know exactly what's going to happen. Yes, it's like, it, it's, he's that guy, is what it was saying to me. And the reason that it was the final really nail in the coffin for me was, was because of all what I had just told you, the, the pr high profile nature of the review. I already knew this, I already knew I was seen this way, but now here it was in print, in a, in a, in a high profile magazine, and now I am done. And that really was, it was, in a way it was good that I saw that, because it fed my, it screwed my courage to the sticking place, as it were, and I'm not going to do it anymore. Right. And, and since then, I haven't done any of those parts, and I'm, I'm booking stuff that's not those parts. Which just says, you can turn the thing around and get out of your niche, but it's like you're turning the Titanic because people are done. They're done thinking once you're that.